up here to plan. Plan. Or Lily or I order drinks. It might be a little intoxicated. And in the background, y'all see that there's. Deltaville in out. 
route. Yeah. We're doing it in reverse, which means we're going Deltaville in. Okay. This will hopefully, with it set like this, it'll steer the entire course into the into the Jackson Hole Creek there or whatever. what I got. Okay, let me see if I get the right that. Merchant Mariner credential. I got my 25 ton captain's license. And here's the thing, ladies. A couple things I would I, I have to say about that. One, I did work my ass off for it and I did study a lot. But I did go to Chesapeake Marine Training Institute in um, like Gloucester, Virginia. And it's mostly run by women and taught by women. So um that was that was really cool to see sorry guys but you guys get all the other stuff so let us have our little moment and then um on the inside cover of your merchant marine mariner credential is your picture now look at that picture kind of looks like a mug shot i'm not gonna lie but if you decide to get your mariner credentials when you go to get your twic card which is the transportation workers identify identification credential you have to go in and get your twig card. They will take your picture. Ladies, if you want to be cute, do it for the twig card. Same picture. Why am I telling you this? Because had I had known that they were going to use my twig card picture as my credential picture, like I didn't know. I had no idea. I would have cuted it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't have just been in like hot summer day ponytail. I would have put on a little makeup and... Maybe a little necklace or something. I would have done something to look a little less, I don't know, captain-y, I guess. <laughs> at the end of a long dirt road deep in the woods. In 1900, the mansion was passed to a woman many people believed to be a witch. Back in the 1920s, the woods behind the home was the perfect place for camping. It was public land, but the witch rumors about the mansion's new owners made many people leery of spending the night nearby. Those who did dare to camp in the woods near the mansion were very careful not to cross into the property. One summer, six Boy Scouts and their scout leader were camping in the woods near the mansion. It was the first outing for their leader who was not at all familiar with the woods or the witchcraft rumors. Unbeknownst to anyone in the party, the group had crossed onto the Dunlora Mansion property. After dinner, the scouts and their leader retired to their tents for the evening. During the night, the scout leader was awoken by strange sounds coming from one of the tents. Thinking the scouts were just goofing off instead of sleeping, the scout leader went in to reprimand them. After noticing their tent flaps were open, the scout leader discovered that all the scouts were gone. Believing that they had wandered off, the scout leader screamed their names only to be answered by silence. Panicked, he walked through the woods until he saw a single light in the distance. He again screamed the names of the missing scouts, but still heard no reply. The scout leader emerged from the woods to find the source of a light. It was a single candle burning in the window of the Dunlora mansion. The scout leader walked onto the front porch and saw that the front door was open. He stepped in and shouted for his campers, but received no reply. Walking inside the mansion, he saw it was covered with dust and cobwebs, as though it had been unlived in for centuries. The furniture seemed as old as the mansion itself. It was a perfectly preserved museum, with the exception of the webs and the dust. He called out for the scouts one last time, still no answer. Deciding to continue his search in the woods, the scout leader turned to leave. It was then that he heard the door to the cellar creek open. At first, he was unsure whether or not to investigate. The scout leader was ready to leave until he heard the child's voice coming from below. 
He walked the old wooden stairs down to the cellar. The room was a wide open empty space, ending in center blocks on all four sides. The scout leader shined his flashlight around the room, but saw no one. He dropped the flashlight down towards the ground. That's when he saw a boy scout hat lying on the dirt floor. A noise behind him made him turn suddenly. His flashlight stopped on the face of the old witch standing right in front of him, inches from his face. She had a wicked smile, and her sharp yellow teeth glistened before him. The scout leader let out a scream before running back up the stairs and out of the house. He ran out onto the dirt road, away from the mansion. Whenever he looked back, he could see the glowing eyes of the witch getting closer. He turned back around to run, and that's when he saw his six scouts. They all stood in a row, their dead eyes fixated on him. All six had their stomachs slit open, their guts pouring out of their bodies and spilling onto the dirt road. They made no attempt to move, they just stood there, looking at their scout leader. Growing increasingly terrified and dizzy, the scout leader eventually passed out from fear. When the scouts had not returned home the next morning, the police went out looking for him. A police car came to a stop on the dirt road. Lying in their path was the scout leader. When they went to check on him, they found that his mind had been broken. He uttered strange phrases about the disemboweled scouts and the witch, none of which the police could understand. They placed him in their car as they went back to look for the missing scouts. It didn't take long before they stumbled upon the campsite. Looking inside the tents, the police saw that all the scouts had been disemboweled with their bodies still resting on the top of their sleeping bags. As they investigated further, they saw the half-burned remains of their guts still smoldering in the fire. Next to the fire, sticking out of a log, was the scout leader's own bloody knife. The scout leader was immediately arrested for the murder of the six scouts. Finding him clearly insane, he was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in an asylum. As strange as this all was, it was still not as strange as what happened one month after the incident. Seven full-grown trees had suddenly appeared along the road leading up to the mansion. At the end of the new tall straight trees, there was one twisted and crooked tree. To this day, those seven trees still stand alongside of the road. The locals believe that the souls of those seven scouts are still trapped in each one of those trees. They also believe that the seventh tree holds the tortured and twisted mind of the scout leader. Here's the thing. I'm not telling Richie that I'm in a video. He gets mad at me. Because he won't, he won't be cool about it. He can be wicked cool, but yeah, he's being video. So you and I are going to have a little secret. The secret is... He's not going to know the video player is. Okay. Hang tight. We have to go through each one of these and what does it say? This one says, it says figure uh, of the sphere. It says coronavirus. Huh? No, it doesn't. It doesn't say what it says.